Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Where the Heck Are the Albans and Where the Heck Are the Albans? We are, well it's just Becky and I today, uh, we were going to start out in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Now you guys have seen us in Cedarburg twice. Uh, once was for the fall festival, which was fantastic. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, then we went and we were disappointed right around Christmas time <laughs> because... We thought that they would be more Christmassy. Christmassy. It is like supposed to be like the Christmas capital of Wisconsin. However, uh, they, they had already done all their Christmas festivals. And so by the time we got there they were done with everything Christmas. So we were gonna go today and we were gonna go to the Strawberry Festival. Oh, 100,000 people are at, I'm not exaggerating either. I don't. The, re, the report, I just looked it up on the internet, the report is 100,000 people are expected to visit the Strawberry Festival today. And I do believe we saw from afar 100,000 people down there. So a lot of people. There was a lot. So we said, ain't no way. So um, I'll show you what <laughs> kind of what we did see. So we'll show you that now. Well, there was a traffic jam and it is everybody getting off where we're going. We're about a mile <laughs> from where we're going. And these are all the parked cars, and it looks like people are parking just about a mile away to uh, go to this festival. Why wouldn't they have a parking lot? Well, they probably do. It's probably just full. I don't ever remember seeing a parking lot in this city. All this traffic on the other side, we decided not to go where we were going Continue today. On 43. And, um, because, well, this is the exit. We actually sat in this exit. So all these cars that you see on the other side, they are waiting to get off at the exit. We saw the amount of people and we said, uh-uh. That was probably the biggest crowd I've ever seen in my life. Bigger than Taste of Chicago. Better crowds. than Taste of Chicago, yeah. Yeah, I'm but thinking, I mean, I'm... it's not even a big space. So it was like, everybody was so crammed into this small i mean you guys saw cedarburg when we were in um we, we did the thing a couple of months ago yeah uh, it's not a big town and they closed off the main street and but it's still very small and there's got to be ten thousand people plus at this place we, there was no parking anywhere no. um and they all used just just boxed in yeah. it was it was too claustrophobic so. I, I i couldn't do it it gave me palpitations yeah so the traffic, it's uh, basically backed up for about two miles, just trying to get off of the exit. And then the closest place that we found that you could probably park was about three miles away from downtown. So yeah, that's crazy. So we're, we're going old. somewhere. Yeah. So we're going somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, so what we're doing instead, we have decided to go to Milwaukee and we are about to go into the... Uh, Public Museum. Yeah, the Milwaukee Public Museum. So they've got a, a special exhibit here called Poison. Uh, so that sounds kind of fun. So we were yeah. interested in that. So we're gonna go see that now. So uh, come on, let's go to the museum. So we have decided to come to the Milwaukee Public Museum and see this exhibit that they have. It's called The Power of Poison. Yes. Ooh. Hey, look at some ideas. All right, so we are now entering the Milwaukee Public Museum. Look at that. Uh, it's like a big swimming dinosaur. There. Oh, and they got a, is that a mastodon? Like a woolly mammoth. So after a while, we are gonna go up to the second floor and we're gonna show you guys this thing called the power of poison. Uh, poison is in everything and no thing is without poison. The dosage makes it either a poison or a remedy. 
Very interesting. Oh, so, so we are going into this very special exhibit called The Power of Poison. It's flavorful or fatal. It all depends on the dose. And so salt is vital to life, but too much can kill you. So here's poisons in nature, nature's pharmacy. It's beautiful, but deadly plant causes heart attacks in animals. It's called foxglove. So ingesting foxglove, fox this is how uh, a lot of murders were, uh, were caused. And uh, people would just blame it on a heart attack. It has apples on it, and the apples cause swelling of the throat. And it mm -hmm. makes it hard to believe, but if you stand underneath it when it's raining, it will, the uh, rainwater dripping will make blisters on your skin, and the sap can cause temporary blindness. Whoa. It's just a bad tree. <laughs> that is one bad tree, so. Plant defenses, toxic <laughs> arsenal. That is crazy. <laughs> the terrible tree. <laughs> So this is three times magnified, but still look at the size of this thing, even only. It's called the Wandering Spider. Holy smokes. It's got venom, and it's a liquid weapon. Okay, this spider is aggressive, and its venom is highly toxic. However, defensive bites, like the one this spider is poised to deliver, inject relatively small amounts of venom and are painful, but rarely fatal. Non-fatal to humans, that is. Experts note that Phoneritria bites may fell a horse. The effects of venom are often different from species to species. Sometimes a small animal is less susceptible than a large one. Hmm. Hmm. And now I did learn this when my dad lived in Arizona. The bigger the scorpion, the less, the less deadly. deadly they are. The smaller ones, those are super deadly. One bite can really get you really bad. I was just talking about this on Facebook. I was talking about the wild cashews. I was eating cashews and I got very interested in where they grew. And they grow on the bottom of this cashew apple. But the shell is highly toxic. That's why you never see a shelled cashew. Because a couple bites of the shell, it can, it can, uh, it can kill you. Well, and no. cashews are also... Um, they're related to poison ivy. Yeah, it has leaves of three and you may not develop a rush the first time you touch it. The toxins are Urushiol. Urushiol. And you'll find, you find it in poison, poison ivy, poison, poison oak, oak Mang and mangoes. Mangoes. Huh. In addition to cashews. It's an oily, sticky toxin that occurs in many plants, including cashews and poison ivy. Once again, this is three times magnified. This is a plant, and uh, at home in plant, chemical warfare. The plant, the ants spray a formic acid, formic acid they produce, and it kills the other vegetation that's encroaching on this plant. Oh, so the ants actually protect this plant. And the plant protects the ants. Look, goes hand in hand. How about that? Called the Devil's Garden. Bullet ants. And they uh, have a retractable syringe like stinger in the abdomen that pumps powerful neurotoxin venom into its victims. With such an arsenal at its ready, these ants target prey animals much larger than themselves, including snails and frogs. This is the eyelash pit viper. Very venomous. Even butterflies have toxins, certain types of butterflies. So not only do they taste bad, and animals over years have learned not to eat these kind of butterflies, because they don't, not only do they taste bad, they are bad. They are very poisonous. And uh, they're talking about mimicry here, about how some look like the very poisonous ones. Red on yellow kill a fellow, but red on black is a friend of Jack. 
So this one would be very poisonous because the red is touching the, the yellow. But if the black was touching this the, one here. the red, this one here, this one's fine. So the Mexican milk snake is not poisonous. The coral snake, highly venomous. And they say, why take a chance? <laughs> <laughs> because Becky said if she saw either one of these, she would just run. Or any snake. Or any snake for that reason, yeah. I don't, I don't like snakes. <laughs> Did you know there are even poisonous, poisonous uh, birds and frogs? So the great-tailed grackle is a poisonous ago, bird. So here we're going to learn some stories of poison. And of course, one of the most famous, Snow White. Here she is in her glass casket after eating the witch's poison apple. And one of the most famous poison stories is William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Because Juliet just wanted to escape an arranged marriage. So she takes a poison that just makes her seem dead. But the poison was so convincing that her lover Romeo believes she is dead and kills himself by taking a different kind of poison. And then she wakes up and then stabs She herself. wakes up, he's dead, she sees what's happened, and she stabs herself in grief. <laughs> Paralyzed or just asleep? There are poisons that can just make you seem like you're dead, but you're not actually dead. So here are plants in disguise. We've got how, uh, hound's tongue, and then wolf's bane, and uh, out of these you can make poisonous potions. And uh, there came lots of stories about, of course, witch's brew. So uh, here's a depiction of Alice in Wonderland at the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And uh, they're talking about mercury poisoning, I believe, here, right? Yes, because um, to, to make the hats, they used mercury. And okay. Made and it made, that's why they always said mad as a hatter, because mm -hmm. it actually made all the hat makers crazy. <laughs> So here they talk about world myths and folklores, all about different kinds of poisons. Uh, Agatha Christie, of course, uh, always wrote about different poisons and murder mysteries. And uh, Nero, Ponce de Leon. So let's just kind of walk through this and. Uh, See what we got here. So in these folk uh, tales, uh, you get different stories about like how in Egypt, Isis poisons Ra, and in India, Shiva swallows poisons to save the world. We got Agatha Christie. Wait, at the end of the book, there might be something really tough. Every head he lost off. Murder in three acts. <laughs> Pocket full of rye. The Crooked House, remember we watched that when we were on. What was Europe? that? The Crooked House, we watched that when we were yep. in Europe. Here's uh, Centuries of Poisoning. All these different books read about poisoning. And the greatest fictional detective of all time even dealt with poisons. In The Sign of the Four. There's even poisoning in children's books, of course. The Toxic Avenger and even Superman and Batman and Spider-Man all dealt with poison. And even in Harry Potter and the Half-Born Prince, Harry saves his best friend from poisoning. That's right. And here's like antidotes. So, poison I error. thought that was corn. <laughs> frankincense? Oh, you thought it was corn? Yeah, I thought it was corn. <laughs> That's frankincense. That's what frankincense looks like. 
here are poison detectors. So these are things that can uh, detect poisons, such as opal, toadstones, silver, Venetian glass, valerian steel, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Hornbill spoons, Caledon. Very interesting. So here they've got this like a magic book and it's all, all different kind of spells and things like that of uh, different kind of poisons and berries. But it's neat because you turn the page and then a new one shows up. This is hemlock. And then on the next page, Monk's, monk's blood. hood. Monk's blood. Or monk's, no, no monk's hood. hood. I yeah. had it right. <laughs> Why I ought to. Shut up. Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane, yeah. Touch. So that tames three-headed dogs. Touch it. I don't know exactly what it does now. The next page we've got... Rhododendron. Rhododendron. Yeah. This is pretty darn cool. Get rid of the goats. Get rid of the goats. So here, we get rid of goats. Something might not be working quite correctly on it. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this page. That's here. pretty darn cool. So they say what the... they say about the bulls band. Okay. So it wasn't the arrow that killed the wolves. It was the poison on the arrow. This thing is fascinating. Socrates. Socrates. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is very, very neat. So over here they talk about how small animals got their poison. And they do have their facts versus fiction things. So this is a, I mean, this is really a cool uh, exhibit. And it's only here till July 7th, so. Yes. So if you do come to the Milwaukee area, you've got till July 7th to, to check this out. So it says uh, Napoleon, uh, did poison really kill him? Because in, uh, in his hair, he actually showed uh, signs of mercury, arsenic. That's, that's bizarre. Cleopatra, is Cleopatra poisoned? Found hemlock in, in her, but she was not killed by an asp. As, uh, as once thought. Ponce de Leon is said to uh, actually have been attacked with a poison arrow. Talk about sick at sea. Pet detective. And forest flies. So Becky is doing this one over here called pet detective. So let's play along, shall we? So the mystery of the poisoned pooch. Here is the scene. So Skippy's in trouble. His owner came home and found him roaming frantically around the yard, drooling, pawing. He started to stagger and vomit. Soon he was having seizures. His heart was racing. But if the vet can slow it down with a shot, there should be time to figure out what happened. 
They found clues around the yard at the vet. Visit the solve page to review your clues and solve the mystery. So we, fly, we find clues here in the yard. What do we got in the yard? We've got uh, it's like some kind of old batteries found in the trash. Could this be the poison? Skippy got into the trash again. If he swallowed a, or bit into a battery, that could happen. Look for vomiting, drooling, pawing at the mouth, and fever. Looks like he had all those. Black Widow Spider. Seizures, elevated heart rate, oh, and inflamed bite mark. Hmm. What's this? Blue green algae. Vomiting, seizures, drooling. It's got all of these. A cane toad. Vomiting, seizures, hyperactivity. Oh, he was he was elevated heart. Oh, I think it's the frog. I'm thinking it's the frog. Alright. There was a snake over here. Seizures, pawing at the mouth, drooling, inflamed bite mark. Didn't look like he had any kind of bite marks though. Poinsettias aren't poisonous, but eating a lot of leaves might give Skippy a mild stomach ache. That's that wasn't that. So let's go to the vet. Drooling, he had red gums. Uh, elevated heart rate. Uh, nothing in his stomach, so nothing unusual there. Visually, he was vomiting, had seizures, hyperactivity, staggering. We took his temperature. Uh, normally, he's got a slightly elevated temperature, so he's got a little fever. We looked for bites, no bites. So I'm gonna say it was that frog. So I'm gonna solve it. And I'm gonna say it was the toad. If I think this is what poisoned him, I do. <gasps> I was correct. Look at that darn toad. Poor Skippy. But we know what, uh, we know what got him, so now we can correct the problem. So those are pretty cool exhibits right there. That's, that was kind of fun, you know, being the detective, finding out what made him sick or things like that. So around this corner, uh, they do have a little movie over here. It talks about the human cell and how poisons affect, uh, affect people. So... Here are some of the marvels of science that they found in nature. Medical marvels. Reptile remedies. Microbes. Medicines from microbes. Arachnids. AIDS from spiders. Is there a spider in here, Becky? Mm -hmm. It sure is. That's a, that's a mighty big tarantula right there. Yeah, it's a Chilean rose tarantula. Not sure if it's alive, but and look, they got uh, ocean allies right inside here. It's funny because this is very colorful, but it's coming across on my screen as kind of bluish because it's not an actual tank inside here. This is a video screen. <laughs> now we're killer cures. What do we got here? Spider. Lung cancer and leukemia. The mangrove. mangrove. Uh, cancer treatment. Cancer treatment. An antibiotic and bacteria. Wintergreens of pain reliever. Pain reliever. Hmm. Oh, foxglove. Foxglove. That's it's the always... heartbeat regulator. So too much of it will give, you a, heart give you a heart attack. But if you need a regulator, it usually uh, involves Fox But that's always like in one of those TV mysteries. I was talking about that yeah. already, yeah. So a Malaysian pit viper. Anti-clogging agent. Anti-clogging agent. Look at that. So you can't, if you're, if you're having problems with blood clots, they give you a viper 
toxins. Bacteria as a bacteria. Sweet one wood worm malaria treatment. A cobra arthritis treatment from cobra venom. Like you can get breast cancer treatment from a Fraser Island funnel web spider. That's awesome. No thanks. What's this? European medical leech anti-clogging or clotting agent, sorry. The black mom has got pain relief. Yeah. Pain relief. You'll die. <laughs> Cancer treatment in the wedge sea hair. A puffer fish. Pain reliever. Brazilian pit viper, blood pressure regulator, vampire bat, anti-clotting agent, fungus, antibiotics, mold, antibiotics, milk from the poppy, the opium poppy, pain reliever, <laughs> opiates, yeah. Yeah. Uh, stinger jellyfish, Alzheimer's treatment, mm. and medical cone snail for nerve function damage. Oh. That was fascinating. I learned more about poisons and things that poisons can actually cure. That was really cool. Look at this cool picture outside here. Look at this. Isn't that neat? That was a great picture. Oh, looks like we're going to have to exit through the gift shop, no, Becky. We're not. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video right here. There is so much stuff to see in this museum. It is actually one of the better museums that I've ever been in uh, for just a, well, I say small public museum. There's so much to see. We were there for hours. So, um, so we'll stop right here at the poison one. Um, I filmed the whole thing. So uh, at a later time, we're going to revisit this and because I really want to show you a lot of the stuff that this uh, this museum has. It's so cool. All right. So um, if you like what you see, as always, give us a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. And we'll see you guys next time on Where the Heck are the Albans? <laughs> Bye, everyone.